hello everyone. My name is Ngo uh, Maunyo Ezekiel. Uh, I'm PhD student and I'm working with uh, the Nikoni. I'm in front of you to present you our work in the use of convolutional neural network to predict young fiber amylose content from NICS. Uh, yam is the fourth most cultivated cultivar after uh, potato, cassava, and the sweet potato. It's cultivated in the intertropical zone, particularly in West Africa. It represents like that the staple food for more than 60 million people. He mostly con consumed the boiled and Pound. He may be uh, accompanied by fish and other one. So many programs of breeding was acquired to improve the, the quality, the quantity of the yam in order to respond to the demand of consumer. But uh, the variety that they create don't respond to the uh, the quality is not accepted by the consumer. This shows us the importance to improve not only the quantity, the yield, but also the quality of yam. So when we are talking about the quality of the yam, we must take into account its com chemical composition. And the principal composition of yam is starchy in the frame of dry matter. This starchy is composed by amylose and amylopectin. And many authors report that the ratio of amylose to amylopectin affect the starch viscosity and uh, one of the functional property of the yam product, which is friability. Uh, all of us know that this is one of the tools that we use today to, to predict the tuber quality. But use NISO to predict the amylose content is uh, very difficult for root tuber and banana. Maybe because the molecular structure of amylose is mostly constituted with a CH bond. And uh, we know that uh, many wavelengths are involved when we, talk, we are talking about amylose molecular, but all of them, them are not known. And then um, two authors try to, to predict the amylose content using NICS with for the reference method uh, partial least square for YAM, but they, they were not succeed. Uh, what we can know with about uh, PLS, all of us know that PLS is linear. He act, he act like a uh, uh, PCA. So uh, by reducing the dimension uh, of the component, we are, we are reducing the information. Uh, in PLS also, we just have the possibility to, to use one pretreatment combination. This is optimal, but uh, it occurred the loss of uh, information also. For PLS also, he is more sensitive to the outlier, especially a spectral one. Uh, Sometimes we, we have to, to suppress uh, the outlier one. Then we take into account a gradient distance or Mahanobis uh, without knowing if uh, this is uh, relate to the uh, right information or not. So all that is uh, the risk of loss of information. Uh, recently, artificial intelligence, uh, particularly deep learning, is one of the field on which we implement the method to calibrate spec or, or NICS measurement. For the model that are designed in this field, uh, they instill to the model how to manage the overfitting. So this is shows us that uh, noise is also information. So the outlier data we suppress in PLS can be used, uh, will be useful for us to, to add 
to the model how to learn to do no, not learning in uh, the noise information. So to to be short of the performance of so the model, we make also the data augmentation. Those this not uh, arm the performance of the algorithm. So this ensures that all combination of pretreatment are, are useful. We don't need to, to make the choice between them. Uh, one of the methods of deep learning is the convolutional neural network. Its particularity that is that he, he act like a super pretreatment. Like we are seeing here, we have the raw spectra. When we apply the pretreatment service key go live first derivative, the, we are seeing how he, he, he make the transformation of the spectra. Now we can see when we apply also the convolutional pre-processing, pre he make the similar uh, feature. So this shows the performance of convolutional neural network to, to, to act like this super pretreatment. So to make the comparison between PLS and the uh, convolutional neural network, we, we use uh, 93 samples of fraud from 21 genotype of Dioscorea alata. Uh, firstly, we, we use the reference method to, to calculate the amylose content of each uh, samples. After that, each sample was passed through the mix to collect 1050 absorbance value from 400 to 2000 nanometer. This was made twice, and then this gives us 186 spectra on which we, we make the calibration. In addition to the raw spectra, we make also well pretreatment and uh, make the, the combination two by two. This gives us 157 possible data set. So we separate the data to the calibration one and the validation using Kena Stone. To implement PLS, we use Python with the library skit learning. To choose the number of components to retain, we use cross validation. The best combination of the pretreatment was also taken into account using cross validation. The convolutional neural network also was implemented in Python using the library Keras and Tencent 4. Here, we use all the two other pretreatment combination to implement the, the model, contrary to the PLS where we choose the best one. So in addition to, we make data augmentation and noise generation to, to occur to the model to do not learn to on the noise information. This graph shows us how we design the convolutional neural network. So the result that we get when we, want, we are optimizing the number of principal components, supposing that we, we, we want to take four, 40 number of convolutional neural, number of uh, PLS component. When we make the optimization, we are seeing that this, when we take for example, nine number of component here. This uh, minimizes the mean square. Uh, but uh, when we we use all the forty one, uh, this increase and go through. So the optimization help us uh, to to choose uh, the number of component number of component that minimize the mean square. Uh, we make the same thing uh, to choose the best pretreatment combination, which minimizes also the mean square error. Here we have the raw spectra. When we don't uh, apply uh, 
any pretreatment. Now, when we apply firstly Gaussian 1, this is the facial. When we apply the second, like uh, Savisky Golai 4, we are seeing that this reduces the mean square error. So where we have the, the color is very green, uh, show us the best combination that we may use to, to make the calibration with PLS. So we compare the result that we get with uh, PLS and convolutional neural network we in on the validation step. So we choose between all the treatment combinations uh, which are, are the best one. So we choose the Gaussian one and the Savisky Golai four to make the calibration with PS. A result assures the, the coefficient of determination assures the capacity of a CNN to, to outperform a PLS. So the ratio of performance to determination of a CNN, which is greater than three, is given us also the robustness of a CNN compared to the PLS. When we are seeing also this graph, here we may see that the points are closer to the regression line, contrary to the PLS where the points are dispersed. This is shows also the, the performance of uh, CNN to, to make the best calibration and uh, reduce the error and give us uh, the best accuracy accuracy compared to the PLS. So in perspective, we want to make another external validation to be sure of the robustness of, of our model. So we will want to try also to be, to be able to, to transfer the knowledge of this model to predict other other com composition of uh, fiber or other one. So the method that we use to make the data augmentation, uh, we want also to use other method like uh, variational autoencoder and conditional variational autoencoder. Our pers in perspective, we want also to have the possibility to make assembly models. So we want to use many models, not only the convolutional neural network to make the calibration. All that in the, in the object to get the best accuracy to predict the composition of YAM tuber and respond to the demand of the consumer. Thank you for your attention.